Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mama Vic channel. Now today I want to do a really quick video reviewing three projects, Polylastic, Kudos and Raven Protocol. The reason I'm reviewing these projects is that I had a request from the three of my followers that requested me to review these three protocols. Now, as I review these protocols, I want to do it really fast because first it takes a lot of time. I'm not going to go out there and read all the white papers and everything about it, but I'm using a couple of criteria and hopefully as we go through this video today, you'll be able to recognize some of these criteria. I'm going to just go through the websites really fast and bring these projects to, to your attention. But things to the things that I looked out for were the team, the community, the partnerships, the technology, the problem that they're trying to solve and what type of solution they have to these problems. And hopefully as I go through the websites really fast, you'll be able to catch on to some of these things. Now from Andreas Antonopoulos, you all know Andreas Antonopoulos, open access, censorship, resistance, neutrality, borderless operation, anonymity to users and miners. These are some of the fundamental ideas and Compromising on some of these ideas eventually destroys a project's monetary policy or use case because those are the fundamental concepts, those are the fundamental ideas that brought all of us to the cryptocurrency community and I, and I urge you to actually find time to listen to any of Andreas Antonopoulos' talks or basically any content out there that he has to provide. I think that's the first step to, to doing your own research in the cryptocurrency space. Also, as people like Elon Musk say, use first principles when thinking about a problem and break down that situation to its most fundamental parts. So fundamental principles is the act of boiling a process down to its most fundamental truths and then reason up from there. And hopefully you can use that today as we go through these projects. The reason why I'm saying all this is that I didn't go out to look at these projects themselves. They were recommended to me and I think they might be good projects if you're interested. So the idea is we can try to be open-minded, radically open-minded, and we try also not to apply old principles to new types of technologies because that's the only way we can move forward. So that being said, let's move into the first project, which is Polylastic. Now, Polylastic, it's, I don't know if some of you have heard of a project called Ampleforth. Now, this was a project that caught on around July of 2020. It became really popular. Now, Ampleforth is not something I really went into because I don't normally catch on to these, these trends, especially because I don't like getting into hype. So this Polylastic project seems to be sort of in that range, but I was humbled when I was looking into it in the sense that they agree that what they're doing is what they're doing is highly experimental. They agree that what they're doing is highly new in the cryptocurrency space, but I can tell you it's based around a couple of principles and it's based around something they call, let's first read through it, um, exposure to the future of money when the EFI space evolves. So EFI is elastic finance and we'll get into a brief definition of what elastic finance means. Tracking the elastic finance markets, experimental algorithmic, collateral backed and cash systems. The Polylastic or Polex index is designed to track token performance within an ever evolving elastic finance industry. Our index will include elastic cryptocurrencies, senior reg tokens, algorithmic stable coins, cash systems and whatever comes next. So the whole point of elastic finance, there's something called rebate bases, right? And you can actually go to this. This was written by Amposense Dao. So from Ampoforth, there is an organization that calls itself Amposense Dao that has written a very conclusive review of this whole rebase thing. It has written the good, the bad, the ugly, the, the fact that there is lack of understanding about the rebase system. Basically what the rebase system is, is the performance of a cryptocurrency or trying to maintain the price of a digital currency by the demand in the market. So if the demand goes up of a cryptocurrency, then automatically the supply is increased to prevent the price from shooting way up. And if the demand of the cryptocurrency starts going down, then the supply is also reduced to also control the price preventing from slumping down. So that's the experimental nature of these rebases. So some of the problem is there's lack of understanding of these rebases, there's still price volatility. And as that is being calculated within these ecosystems, it's supposed to also maintain the value of or increase the value of a token as well, not in terms of the price of a token per se, but just the whole I mean, so if you hold like a thousand tokens, even if they may not shift that much into price, maybe their buying power might increase over time. It's something like that. So those are some of the issues, lack of understanding about rebases, price volatility, concerns about the utility of the token, even the polylastic token themselves. If you read their white paper here, which is an amazing read, actually, this is 
even if I'm not doing this video as an investment or as a way to for people to invest, but just reading some of these concepts, the the how they're talking about the the whole evolution of Bitcoin with monetary finance and how the elastic finance idea or the rebase idea might you know fundamentally change the way we see stable coins and reduce the reliance on stable coins controlled by central entities. So this being an experimental feature. Uh, they also not sure whether it's something that will actually catch on or it will be something that will disappear over time within the cryptocurrency space. So that kind of puts up some legitimacy to the project because they understand what they're doing. They understand the risks involved and they understand that if this blows up in a positive manner, it will actually, it might be something that might fundamentally change the cryptocurrency space forever. So some of the issues, limited adoption of elastic finance. The point of this report is to provide a clear explanation about what the rebase is designed to achieve and why it's important for the broader crypto economy, helping users, investors, developers, and other objective and others objectively evaluate elastic assets to determine which ones deserve attention and may have the greatest odds of success, demonstrating that elastic assets have utility beyond trading and speculation and introducing resources that can be used to improve and expanding and understanding execution and development of elastic finance. So there's this whole bunch of cryptocurrencies like Ampleforth and here the Paul X token and there are others. I think if you already know about this, maybe you can recognize some of these symbols. So the idea of Paul X is that they want to create a pool. First of all, they're moving on to a mainnet. On the website, I can see they say powered by Binance. So I guess maybe they're trying to look for the right infrastructure to use with the list fees. So they're planning to move on to a mainnet and they're trying to create value for this token by applying a taxation policy. So as people move around tokens, you can see a formula here. So if X is the amount of tokens you have, if you have X less than 100 tokens and those you're going to move around, then the network fee is 0 0.02 of those tokens and that certain percentage of that is destroyed and the other percentage is redistributed to some of the people maybe in a pool as we're going to see and or the net so this is a formula if this then that's the fee structure else network fee there's a square root of what you're transferring divide by five so that's a simple uh, coding structure within coding so let's just look at this really quick this is the so they want to create a pool which is a polyelastic weighted index so if we briefly review this this chart right here so let's quickly review this. You have a bunch of users here that have the Paul X token. They transfer it into the fee treasury. It takes a, a part of those fees. It takes 20% of those fees and then burns them. Then I guess the rest are put into the pool and redistributed to some of the people that are in the pool. Now, one thing I caught on here is that most of the liquidity pools are 50-50, except for, you know, I think Uni Uniswap version three is trying to, or Curve Finance, one of those other DeFi platforms, uh, introduced or is introducing a pool where you can have multiple tokens in there. And I think I've seen some on the Binance Smart Chain. So here they have a 70-30% ratio. So you have an LP pool here where there are different projects that are basic, that are fundamentally elastic finance projects. So let's say project A to F and all these are elastic finance finance projects. Those are the ones that are fitted into this LP pool, which takes a 70% of that pool. And then this other 30% is a total of the Paul X tokens that are in there. So that's the division. That's how it's divided out. Now, now all the projects that are in the Paul X pool, they are, they're supposed to be a total of a hundred percent. That's the ratio that's divided with the percentage that's divided among us, all the projects it's supposed to total up to a hundred percent. As you can see in this example, there's a 10% here, 20%, 30%. So all these total up to a hundred percent. And then the total stake in here is multiplied by the market capitalization. And so as we can see here, the way that pool is sort of governed, the, this team is claiming that they'll look out, they'll capture both technical and innovation and community strength. So like traditional indices, Poelastic will track projects with significant usage and demand, as well as those that show a vibrant community and commitment to the ongoing, to their ongoing development. So they're claiming that those are the types of tokens that they'll be putting within these pools. So they want to create a sort of secure ecosystem where they're not just staking random tokens, but tokens that are actually striving to build some important technology and are determined to, you know, build out their ecosystem and build real products. So quickly, you can view the team, you can view the some of the advisors that advisors that are there and then here at the bottom they're saying our team members have experience working with some of the leading blockchain brands I, I don't know how true this is like Google 
Bitfinex, I, I didn't even know Google was a blockchain brand. FetchAI, hey guys, I didn't even know FetchAI was part of this. I, I'm as shocked as you. So I don't know if the FetchAI people are aware of this, but their name is here. Uh, Bank of America, I didn't know Bank of America is a blockchain brand. Uh, I can see Holochain here, Orion. And we were collaborating with great partners like Sartic. I saw somewhere on CoinMarketCap, they were actually certified Chainlink, Binance Chain. So even if you don't approach this as an investment, their light paper is actually a very good read in terms of educating yourself about this whole elastic finance thing. And it will help you understand some of these clever innovations that are being deployed in the cryptocurrency space to keep yourself up to date and educated. So quickly, let's look at the next one. Before we do that, yeah, I'll post this link as well. You can read this. This was an amazing read. You can understand more about elastic finance and what it means and all the different speculations. And, you know, the Polex token price, you can come to CoinMarketCap Coin Market and look at that. So the next we want to look into is Kudos. So I think Kudos and Raven Protocol, which you want to look at next, I think they're doing some amazing stuff. They're pro... Well, let's first go back. Polyelastic, what they're trying to look at is the whole stablecoin situation and how how can that be solved using elastic finance? So I guess that's the problem and solution. So if we look at Kudos here, uh, they're saying they are a decentralized cloud computing network for everyone. Kudos is bridging. By the way, you all know that Kudos is one of the partners of Fetch.ai as well. So Kudos is bridging the gap between cloud and blockchain by using the world's available computers to power a more decentralized, sustainable and connected world. And our mission to enable more efficient use, use cases, more efficient use of the world's computing resources. So if you if you're someone that's interested into cloud computing, I think this is something you might want to look into. So they're talking about smart contracts, scalable decentralized blockchain compute bridges, scale out decentralized cloud, lower cost, fast transactions, create NFTs and assets, oracles, and you know they have some here they they show you a structure here. You're a blockchain developer, you go through a smart contract, then use their Kudos oracles. Um, if you want to run a validator node, you can buy tokens. You can stake up to 2 million Kudos tokens, earn a high stake reward. And their partners are quite interesting. Of course, they talk about the listings here on CoinMarketCap. You can see more uh, Blockfolio, Uniswap, and some of the exchanges that are here. And the strategic partners like Outlier Ventures, DuckDAO, and so many others. Then here, I can see AMD. And Ultra is based around video games, Algorand, you all know Algorand within the cryptocurrency ecosystem. I don't know what King's Distributed Systems is, but there's Blender Grid, if you know the 3D design rendering software called Blender, I guess this is somewhat affiliated with that. So I think it's it's awesome. And then, you know, you look at all these solutions they're providing, the token can be used for governance, voting, staking, wallet, multi-chain development, and then some testimonials here from this company that's, you know, acknowledging what they're building at kudos and how amazing it is and then today there are here some facts for you hundreds of millions of servers over two billion pcs i guess here they're trying to show you their pot the potential market that's out there hundreds of millions of games consoles 2.7 billion smartphones uh, consumers winning hardware owners winning environmental wins so there's over one trillion dollars spent annually on it hardware yet up to 50 percent of the time this infrastructure is sat there either doing idle so you're trying to harness that power of this hardware so that you don't just leave your computer seated there you can you can use it for you can put it to use so solution a greener more efficient scalable compute network the kudos network is a layer 2 oracle network governed by smart contracts connecting blockchain developers services including DeFi, to a global footprint of computing power on the kudos network the kudos network is a distributed computing platform already providing customers around the world with up to 10x more cost effective computing while also providing more equity for hardware owners and you know you can see 50,000 nodes so they're trying to be decentralized over 300,000 users um, 500,000 TF flops of computing power uh, I guess Terra flops you know live in 145 countries then they have a roadmap here you know you you can check it out 2019 up to 2021 and in the future successful token launch listing on bitmax so they they launch their token so in the future they're trying to a close beta test net public incentivized so i guess they're in the process of launching themselves and when you go to meet their team that's another feature you have to look for you look at the founders there's here matt hawkins is the ceo and founder founders of numerous uk tech businesses including c4l uh, an internet infrastructure an internet infrastructure provider which served one percent of the uk market there's andrew strummy here 
Andrew has, an, has 19 years of industry experience in software development. There's Andrew Walker, over 15 years in, in experience in software as a service, growing and leading course. There's jo Dr. Joan Garcia Tomo, Richard Lope, lead developer. This is the, you know, Dr. Joan was the head of data and research. This one's the lead developer, then Lee Wood. Lee Woodham as COO, and then these others. So the team looks like a very, very capable, competent team of people. And honestly, I think this, wow, it's a very large team. I actually hadn't seen all this. And then they have a bunch of advisors here. So I think Kudos is trying to solve some major stuff. If you really understand the cloud computing, cloud-based and harnessing of computing power, then I think it's something you might look into because I think it's a legitimate project trying to solve a legitimate problem. And they're, they're really, I guess, working hard to p put solutions out there. So it's something you have to look into yourself. Then lastly, we look at the Raven protocol, which is, they say they're a decentralized and distributed deep learning training protocol, providing cost efficient and faster training for deep neural networks. So, you know, you can look into them, what we're doing. Deep learning is expensive and time consuming. Image recognition, natural language processing, computer vision, etc., all require extracting millions of parameters to identify structure and patterns. This is very computationally intensive and in conventional methods, there is an inherent latency in the architecture. So we solve latency by chunking the data into really small pieces, maintaining its identity and then distributing it across the host of devices with a call to action gradient calculations. And then, you know, this is the problem they're trying to solve and they seem legitimate. So you can look at the issue. What is the issue? Existing deep learning distribution methods and frameworks have come a long way yet still suffers from slow training speeds and expensive servers. Data and model parallelism have been used to optimize this but it creates inherent latency in the network and is not scalable. Training a neural network to do image recognition on a data set of 1 million images takes about two weeks and costs about $1,000. That's just one training run. Models need to be updated constantly. And then their solution, Raven has developed a completely new approach to distribution that speeds up the training the training run of 1 million images and brings it down to only a few hours. Our approach has no dependency on the architecture of each compute node in the network. We can utilize the idle computer power on desktops, laptops, and mobile devices, allowing anyone in the world to contribute to the Raven network. This will bring costs down to a fraction of what you need to pay for traditional cloud services. Most importantly, this means Raven will create the first truly distributed and scalable solution to AI training by speeding up the training process. So if you want my opinion, I think, and here you can look at their white paper and then you can look at the Raven protocol current price and the marketing supply. Actually, yeah, let's look at Polylastic. This is their maximum supply, total supply, you know, their price currently. Then for Kudos, this is their total supply, maximum supply, their current price. And lastly, Raven protocol, total supply here and their current price. So if you want my opinion, I'm, I feel like Polylastic is extremely experimental, but I think they're trying to tackle some really, really interesting problems. So if you feel like you're a risk taker, most of these tokens are very, very low price. So if you want to approach them as an investment, then please just invest. Don't invest more than what you're willing to lose. Just maybe invest what you could afford to lose and see how it plays out in the future. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But if you're highly interested in cloud computing and all that, then you might as well just follow up on Kudos and Raven Network and just be interested in their ecosystem, be a part of their community, be a part of their Telegram channels, their Twitter channels, and follow the process, see what they're trying to do, be a part of the process. They help them solve some of the problems they have and you know, get yourself involved, get your feet wet, and then that's when you'll truly understand the deeper meaning of the problems they're trying to solve and what solutions they have for those problems. Guys, I hope this wasn't too long. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. I appreciate everyone that has stayed this long and has always come back to watch some of the content I have to provide and I hope it's good. Have a good one.